how are we guys welcome back to the channel let's see who's in here tonight but today we have a bit of content coming on managers now simon grayson was appointed fleetwood town head coach yesterday afternoon we're going to go through it in this stream all through it go through the appointments of david dunn go through the appointment of the backroom staff and can Fleetwood stay in League One this season. Please make, if you can, if the sound all good, guys, let me know in the chat down below. That'd be appreciated. We are going to go through the appointment of Larry, also known as Simon Grayson, his previous clubs and his previous employers. And also go through the Joey Barton interview on the Robbie Fowler podcast, all in this live stream. Now, First of all, yesterday I saw the odds on William Hill and, and Skybet, uh, whichever you want to. Got no um, no sponsor, um, and Simon Grayson was up there. And if you didn't know, there was Anthony Barry from Chelsea rumored to come into the football club, a former card. However, he rejected the job. Simon Grayson's name was there. And now he becomes our manager. The odds got slimmer and slimmer. And now he is our manager. We're going to go through in this stream and give my thoughts. But let's say hello to the comments first. Hello, mother. Hello, Cobblers Vlogs. Hope you're well, mate. Um, well, I will um, I will put your comment up in a minute, MG Stevenson. Um, I will uh, go through it and give my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll go through all the comments uh, as I'm discussing it. We have got Lee Charles TV on from 7 o'clock giving his thoughts from a Blackpool point of view. And poor Jane can finally watch Sunderland Till I Die Now. And it's me that's going to be in the pain that won't be able to watch it, um, as they say. No, but 1.30 yesterday, dead on, we got the news that we'd been waiting for. Simon Grayson in charge of Fleetwood Town. Now, Simon Grayson, more promotions than any other manager in Skybet League One. Promotions with Leeds. United. This is a Leeds United side that was struggling in League One. You've got to remember that. And he was doing real a 50% win record almost. 49.7% if you want to be correct. But again, a promotion with Leeds United. He, you know, played 169 games, 84 wins. That is some achievement. 40 draws and 45 defeats. Got promotion from League One. Also, early on in his career, he did manage Blackpool, who Again, I'll go through his second spell at Blackpool, but his first spell, he started well. And it, 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 it's like a League One Jose. He started well, and he's gone a little bit downhill ever since. Um, I don't think he's, you know, the Jose of League One, he looks wise. But um, it's... Anyway, early on in his career, he got a promotion with Blackpool, and he was, you know, a young manager. Played, you know, won 60 games, drew 51, lost 51. Not a bad record. Um, I think he's a League One manager early on in his career because he used to always struggle in the um, the championship. I remember he got, you know, replaced quite early on and then Holloway came in after that. So, yeah, Huddersfield, again, another promotion there. Only won 17 games there, though. A 34% win record. p and &E, that is where he got most of his... You know, games done, he won 104 games. They only lost 57. Uh, I don't think the Blackpool fans were too happy. Let me know if there's any Blackpool fans in the chat. What Were you too happy with him leaving? The, obviously, he left for Leeds, didn't he? But were you happy when you went to press and did that draw a line? Um, then Sunderland happened. Now, Sunderland is a job that I don't think any manager can deal with, I'll be honest with you. Um, I just don't. I don't with him with Sunderland. Did he struggle? Yes. Did he do well? No. But I can't think of a manager since Big Sam Allardyce has done well there. David Moyes? No. You know, Simon Grayson? No. You can remember they weren't signing any players. They had to rely on freeze and you know players that didn't want. He had attitude problems. Players on high wages. He had that to deal with. And then Chris Coleman came in. Was he a bit better than Grayson? Yeah, but not not great. Jack Ross. No. Phil Parkinson? No. The new manager, Lee Johnson, you can't quite question him yet. So, on Sunderland, I can't really comment on because I think it's a tough job. And I think that might have scared him a little bit, I'll be honest with you. And I think that might have 
Um, troubled him, I'll be honest with you. Um, ever since Sunderland, Bradford, <clears throat> he came in like the January or the February, only won three games, drew five, lost six. <clears throat> so, again, he he said the statement, I'm a championship manager, you're lucky to have me. Didn't go well. Blackpool happened again. I always say, I don't think club legends should ever go back to the club. I know they wanted Charlie Adam there last year. I know they wanted Ian Holloway back in previous years. But why... They love the club, don't get me wrong, at Blackpool, but why would they want to go back? And I was surprised when Grayson did, because he was liked the first time. He got them up. Yeah, he ruined it a bit when he went to Preston and Leeds, but he could have left it, sweet memories. Did he start well under Grayson? Yes. However, it went sour. It really went sour. And um, I thought they played long ball when I, when I watched them play. Um, I need to watch more footage of them play again. But it was literally relying on Armin Nanyale for goals and, you know, Feeney for assists. They beat us. Us and Peterborough were their best two performances last year under Grayson, in my opinion, and they came quite close together. Blackpool fans might disagree with me. Um, but, you know, 13 games, 112 draws, 13 defeats isn't a bad record. But this is a, a side that we're heavily backed, you know. He spent... I think nearly £2 million on players. So you'd expect a little bit. I think the style of play didn't suit them. Um, and then Critchley's gone in there and done a better job, in my opinion. If Fleetwood got a win percentage in the next 21 games of 1-6, drew 8 um, and lost 7, would I take that now? Yes. 25 points. Um, 24, 25 points from those games. We'd be, we'd be more than safe. And then we can say move on in the summer. Um, we are going to come to your comments in a minute. So keep the comments coming, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the appointment. I'm going to go through it in just a second. And um, Grayson has David Dunn as his assistant. Now, David Dunn followed Grayson after his Blackpool period. And he didn't manage a couple of Blackpool games, to my knowledge, um, last year. Then got the opportunity in the summer to go and manage himself. It was always going to happen when... <laughs> When a number two gets a chance to go to a number one, it was always going to happen. And he got that opportunity. And, you know, at Barrow, I thought, I'll be honest with you, they didn't have a great squad. I But I felt it was harsh that they sacked David Dunn. I really did. And I just found it the wrong time. He's improved since he's gone, to be fair, under Jolly. But they brought a lot of signings in from League One and above. And, again, it's been great and helped him out at Barrow. And they win at the bottom two. So, says a lot. I'm, I'm more optimistic now than I was a few, like, 24, 36 hours ago. I'm trying to think six months, keep us up, and we move on in the summer. It's a deal that reminds me a lot when Uwe Rosler came in, second season syndrome, wiped in. We had, I think, 33 points. Th 33 points after 34 games. So, 32, 33 games. Something like that. And we needed about... 18 points to stay clear. John Sheridan came in. He wanted to put smiles on the faces and get a reaction. And that's what he did. He won six, drew four, lost three, collected 21 points from a possible, you know, 39 points available. So hopefully Grayson can do that. Do I think we'll stay up? I'm not sure. I'll be honest. I think we've got enough quality. I think Wigan, Burton, Northampton and Wimbledon will go down. But Wimbledon got a new, you know, getting a new manager, Luke Gerrard or Danny Cowell is rumoured to go there. Um, so very interesting to see how that goes. And uh, we're going to come to Grayson's quote in a minute. We're going to go through all your comments now after the 10 minute mark. Let me know your thoughts on the appointment and let's go through it. Grayson has brought in as a stopgap Sheridan style. Exactly what I've just said. Spot on. Reckon they'll uh, have another manager permanent in the summer. Well, I hope that's the case. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, I, you know, someone young that, you know, Pilly knows, Tim Cale's been mentioned, Charlie Adams been mentioned. Do I think those two will be it? Mm, no. I, I think it'll be someone else with, um, he wanted a new direction. And uh, let's see how that goes. Um... Sam, you're done. Anyone? I know, mate. I know, mate. Hey, Ben, you're right, pal. Uh, still not blocked me on Twitter as you have Grayson. Now, a story. 
I said to George on the 13th of January, this was the a week on Wednesday after Barton left the club. So this was, you know, two or three weeks ago now, 13th of January. I went, if we get Grace now, block you on Twitter. And then, you know, on the 31st of January, 18 days later, but uh, he's appointed as manager. Um, we have to give him a chance, to be honest. We do. Um, we can't write him off before it happens. I really hope he proves me wrong. I don't care how we play now, I'll be honest with you. Nothing can be worse than what we've been. We need wins. We need a stable, you know, gap. We need to win games of football. Sheridan's football wasn't pretty, remember. His wins, you know... Um, a 2 0 win at Rochdale, a 2 0 win against Bristol Rovers. Um, you know, they, they weren't, you know, pretty wins by all means, but he got the job done. You know, I think we won four on the spin under him. We beat Wimbledon away 1 0 in the worst, one of the worst conditions I've ever seen in my life. Um, there was other wins, you know, in there, two ones, 2 0 against Walsall. So we kept a lot of clean sheets. That was a foundation. Um, under Sheridan, We've been keeping clean sheets in previous weeks. I think in 12 games, we've only conceded nine goals in the last 12. You know, we scored five, we only conceded nine. I think I think we've kept, I think I worked out the other day, I think something like six or seven clean sheets in the last 12. We've kept, you know, two of late, 10 men against Oxford, we only conceded one. MK Dons was a three. Yeah, that was awful, I'll be honest with you. Portsmouth, you know, one. And then before that, Crew one. Wigan, one. Portsmouth, zero. So, Swindon, zero. So, the clean sheets haven't been that bad. And, um, like I say, um, Grayson is a good appointment, IMO. He's a good appointment for what Fleet would need right now. Um, I feel he's experienced. And I want, I, I, if I made my video now, it'd be very different. I wasn't happy yesterday. I'll be honest with you. I think it's a dull appointment. However, we need wins. And he likes to file Coast Tour. He's been at Preston. Fleetwood and Blackpool. And he's also been at Bradford, Leeds and Uddersfield. So he likes his Yorkshire area and he likes the file code. Anywhere else, no. But he has got promotion with Blackpool and did very, very well with um, Preston over the years. You know, a stable championship club he made them. And uh, Preston fans will tell you a lot different to Blackpool fans, in my opinion. Uh, I've been, it's quite surreal that you have uh, got Blackpool management team from last year. It is weird. It really is. And is it not Gaithan Barton? I don't... Uh, yeah, no, no. not Because Barton's more younger, but Grayson knows the division. And, you know, Barton, Barton had to go. Barton had to leave the football club. Especially after his interview today, I'm glad he left the football club. And I'm glad, you know, we've gone our separate ways. We needed a fresh face. Grayson's going to be a cheaper option, in my opinion. It's going to be a, a short-term deal, keep us up, and you might, you know, might get a payoff like Sheridan did. I think Pilly wanted Pilly wanted time to make the decision. He said that, and he saw the results coming in, and they, they weren't up to standard, even for a mid-table side, uh, just being outside the playoffs. So when he said that we were four off the playoffs, we're like nine off with like playing two or three more games. So he thought we need to the bottom than the than the top. You know, we could get scraped into this in the next few months. We need a, a, a body now. Let's, you know, look at look who's available, look who's applied. Grayson probably did apply, in my opinion. I did say that on the FBP a few weeks ago. And let's get him in. And then it gives me more time to think and more time to persuade a manager to come on board because he wanted to change his manners. We are going to come on to a few quotes that um, Joy Barton said on the Robbie Fowler God Squad podcast in about 10 minutes' time. We're going to carry on reading your comments. 100% exactly, exactly, uh, David. Um, you, you know, those managers that I mentioned before, they've not, you know, done well. Parkinson, you know, not done anything since. Ross is over in Scotland. Um, you know, Coleman, you know, managed one club, didn't go to Apparently, he's going to go to Sheffield Wednesday, I've heard. So that could be a decent appointment there. But I just feel to give him the benefit of the doubt, give him a chance. We've never seen him manage. And I, I I don't think it's the most glamorous of appointments, but I don't care. I want to stay in League One. And it's as desperate as that. We've been so bad of late. Nine points in the last 12 games. We need to improve. It's as simple as that. Um, 
Bradford wasn't there long enough to judge for me. Spot on. And remember Bradford, they were awful at the time. The players that they had in the football club, it was a rotting core. They, I don't think anyone could have helped Bradford. I think that's the season they went down. So, you know, three wins from, you know, 14 games from there isn't a bad return from what they had before. So, again, you can't judge him. Blackpool, he was there six months. And I think you can judge him more on that than their style of play. A lot of the games he won early on, I, I looked at the stats, and I actually did message Jordan about this, saying, oh, you're getting lucky, aren't you? And he goes, I don't care. We're winning games in football. And then I felt the luck ran out because they were losing games that they are probably, you know, scraping by or getting a point in. And that's where Blackpool and Fleetwood lost each other last year because we were drawing games where they were losing. I remember Bristol Road, uh, Oxford away, Accrington at home. Um, there was a few other games that I remember. Lincoln away, I remember Jane crying after the game, saying how bad it was. So there are just a few examples where I think he just lost it. But, you know, 13 wins out of 35 games, so, sorry, 38 games. It's not a bad record. If we could have a, you know, a 35% win record, I'd take it right now because, you know, the last win, we've, not, we've won one in 12. We're, we're winless in eight and we've only ever gone nine without a win in, in the Football League before. And that was under Uwe when we nearly went down. I'm saying this now, we were better under Presley than we are now. We need to get points on the board. Two wins in a row, you're looking at, a comfortable mid-table, you know, maybe lower table, mid, you know, mid-table finish. You know, you don't beat Bristol Rovers. You don't, you know, get anything because you got Charlton, Sunderland, and Accrington coming up. You know, those games that we've, I'd like to get a point out of uh, of each game at least. So it's going to be interesting how Fleetwood manage it because I always feel when we play the better team to get something. But Bristol Rovers is a must-win game. We've only won one game since we played Bristol Rovers away, remember? And that was a 4-1 win. That was a Plymouth game the week after. So, um, we've only won one game at home since then, I apologise. We won, we won against Swindon away from home. But we need a win. And hopefully, he's. Uh, I think it's his first training session either today or tomorrow. He gets smiles on faces. There's an uproar in performance. You know, because under Wilds, I thought they were a little bit relaxed. Uh, Wilesy, I didn't think, had the authority that I would have liked uh, to see him have the job. If he would have got it, he would have had the authority. The players just looked a little bit relaxed and thought, we can take our eye off the ball here. Under Grayson, I hope he comes in and gets an immediate impact because, you know, Bristol Road was coming up, Charlton coming up, uh, Accrington Stanley coming up, Sunderland coming up. There's a lot of big games coming then in March. Got Blackpool in there, so it's going to be a tight game. Tight games coming up with uh, against good sides. Um, we have signed um, uh, his son on on loan from Oxford. All right, um, uh, was not nice under uh, Grayson. It's never nice football under Grayson, but you got to take the rough with the smooth. I understand him leaving for Leeds. It's his boyhood club. Going to p &E didn't really bother me either. I don't like his attitude for the second time round. Very negative and uh, in mentality and in, and in play. Big statement, because I, I feel sometimes, I, Barton was like that towards the end. It was kind of, I thought he was making a point. To Pilly and it looks like he was. So it's, it is a weird one, and hopefully um he's not like that for us. But um he's only he, I think with how long did I think it was a two-year deal at Blackpool, wasn't it? He signed. Is it six months of Fleetwood? So he has to prove a point to get a job because if he has five bad jobs in a row, Sunderland, Bradford, Blackpool, Fleetwood, and you know, the end of his Preston career wasn't the greatest, four bad jobs. It's not going to look good on his CV and people will maybe think about appointing him. He's 51 years of age now and he's got a wealth of experience. He's been managing since 37, 38, 2007. And, um, yeah, if these clubs he's been at, he's been at for a while. Blackpool was up for three or four years. Leeds the same. Preston the same. Since then, it was Sunderland for a few months, Bradford for a few months, Blackpool for five months. So he's never really settled down anywhere since, you know, his Preston days. And, um but let's hope he can, you know, find a place on the foul coast. And um, the only good thing is you can turn it off on I follow. You, you, in the ground, uh, it's Jim's bar. Um, Fleet was going down with no money in the bank. No money in the bank. Uh, thank you, George. Um, 
He's like a Blackpool reunion. You'll be getting oyster next. Uh, don't think Simon Grayson will sign any players. I don't think so either. Because um, Andy Pilly will go on to that now. Has put Fleetwood in an, an embargo. So what has happened is Fleetwood wants to bring young, hungry players into the squad. Shaden Morris, Jay Matete, Ryan Rydell, Harrison Holgate, James Rydell. So these players are getting a chance now. They were getting a chance under Joey uh, under Joey Barton the odd time. Um, Matetti's gone out low to Grimsby. Good move for him. Holgate's getting into the side regularly now. And I think he'll play the next two games with Morgan being suspended. I'm not sure if that's a one-game or a three-game ban just yet. Um, so he's got a chance to prove himself. Barton says they're not ready yet to play in our first team. He wanted to go for the you know the older, experienced heads. Pilly disagreed. He wanted cares back in goal. And... He said, I want to keep Lutweiler. The players have lost confidence in Cairns, which is, I don't agree with. I disagree massively with that statement. Um, he'd even pay Lutweiler's wages to keep him instead of Cairns. Imagine how Cairns feels about that. Oh, my own manager is paying someone else's wages to play in front of me. I'd feel a little bit down tooled, I'll be honest with you. And he won't have the morale of the dressing room. Good of him to, you know, pay, because he paid his own staff, he said, because he wanted more staff than Pilly would allow. So, fair play from doing that. Like, I respect that. But the lost communication, they didn't talk for 10 days. And then Pilly thought, we need to end this now amicably, shake hands, and then let's move on. And this is the different direction. I think he learned a lot under appointing Joey Barton. I really do. And I think Joey sometimes went a little bit too mad in transfer windows. I think we could have been a little bit relax a little pilly could have been a bit tight and said no otherwise the other would be in the situation now we obviously i think andy spent the money in the summer because he got a loan thinking oh we'll have fans in october and november maybe four crowds back in february march that hasn't happened and he thought we have to retain it now we've let paul cooch sam stubbs go tom edwards lead the football club chairs and we bought two loanies the warring signings now the defense are all on loan and managers only here to the end of the season as well. So it is um, it is baffling times right now. We are going to get Lee, Lee in, in the next two to three minutes to get his thoughts on the Blackpool situation. But we're going to go through some more of your comments. Imagine waiting for all this time to sign Grayson as a manager, Pfft, says George. Um, thing is with that, George, it's a, um, it's a decent um, experienced manager. But when was his last promotion? It was what? With Leeds, um, with Huddersfield, sorry, um, you know, it it is a weird one. It really is. You know, got promoted with Blackpool, Leeds, Huddersfield, and Preston. So it was his last promotion, but he's not done much in the last, you know, few years. Um, that needs to be sorted. Uh, Dunn is a good point for the cause. I agree. I called it early. Yeah, exactly. I think George said it as a joke at first. And uh, uh, Mother's not RP saying, um, but Andy Pilly is the man in charge of the finances. This is the last chance for Grayson. Spot on, David. Uh, it's not a transfer embargo. Pilly's just said, I'm not spending any money in this transfer window. It's, I don't know why people are getting worked up. You know, he's got a low. You know, it's tight time for the football club. You know, we've got. You know, this situation with the pandemic right now, when are fans going to be back in? When's it going to be back to normal? When's he going to have a, a normal live stream, you know, of cash? Our young players come through the system and we can sell them on, like we did with Amari Bell, like we did with Jamie Vardy, like we did with Devan Chekhov. Sign these players on freeze or bring them through your academy and then sell them on and you make money and that'll be reimbursed into the squad. He's putting money into the pool for He's put money into... Um, the train facility dome. So he's not, you know, tightening up like that way. He just wants to put his money into a long term future of the club because he could easily put five million quid into the club and it'll last what three, two, three years and then be left with nothing. Or he could, you know, put a little bit less in yearly but have a sustainable football club. It's as simple as that. I can't see it being any worse now at Fleetwood. He will keep you up and you'll need to rebuild in the summer. Spot on, George. I think with it being a short-term contract, he'll keep us up, he'll get the morale up, and then he'll leave in the summer with his head to held high, and it could help him get a managerial job, like he did for Sheridan. Sheridan went, I think, after Fleetwood got the Carlisle job, uh, after Fleetwood. 
And so he got he, did, he got the Carlisle job, then left for Chesterfield, then left for Waterford, then left for Wigan, then left for Swindon. So he's had a lot of jobs since town. Uh, poor appointment. It's a few months, mate. We're in a relegation battle. I've said it for weeks. I said there's a joke earlier on. We're in a relegation battle. We need experience. We need to stay up. It's as simple as that. We've got 21 games to go. If Pilly didn't bite the bullet now, Fleetwood would have gone down. It is as simple as that. I don't care what people say. Pilly won't let it happen. The squad won't let it happen. You're too good. Nobody is too good to get relegated from League One. It's as simple as that. Plymouth were on fire two years ago. They were like 12. When we played them in March, they were 13th slash 14th in the table. They were nine points off the bottom four. They went down on the final day. Sloppy. Anyone in the, the bottom 12 could have gone down in the last six or seven games. Anyone can go down. Fleet was last in the last few fixtures of the season. They are brutal. Ipswich involved. You know, whole city away from home. It was away. We still got Ipswich to play. We still got Blackpool to play. We still got Hull to play. We still got you know Sunderland to play. These are sides that'll be fighting for the playoffs slash promotion this year. So you know we need wins. Uh, Blackpool game. Actually, we've got twenty games. Blackpool game we always lose at Bloomfield. Um, so uh, very interested to happen. See what that happens there. How what do you think about Tommy Angels? Good club. Uh, you need to focus on survival this season. Spot on. If I speak, agreed on. Food are the lowest uh, right now, and you're still above the lashes. With, with three games, we have played three games extra. I you will, May. Uh, club still living. Yeah, to be fair, can I just say, but cheers for all the mentors here and all the followers that I have gained So oh, on Twitter. Um, but if you are new to the channel, guys, please like this stream. That'd be massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel. That'd be like really helped me out a lot. Uh, which we're closing on 6,000 subscribers. We've got loads of streams, loads of videos going up. So if you could subscribe, that would mean the world to me. Uh, hi, Ben. Uh, yeah. Um, we need two or three signed 100%. Yeah, especially with eight games in Feb. We've got six up the cobblers. Um, we are going to bring Lee. Um, no. um, Lee, are you ready? Uh, we are going to bring Lee in. He is ready. Um, and, uh, you know, Born ready, Nappers. Born ready. How are you, Lee, mate? I'm absolutely fine. I need to move across a bit, don't I? Because I'm sort of have you got me there. <laughs> all right? You're meant to be the Mr. Professional, Lee. Well, I was I was all right on my screen, wide screen, but on this little narrow thing, I was in the wrong place. Right. I'm, I'm right now. I'm happy now. Perfect. So, so Nappers. Hey. And I you must stress that as well. Nearly six thousand subscribers following Floyd. Oh, it's, phenom it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal, honestly. It's really good. Great Cheers. vlogger, honestly. I think, I think very good. But how are you feeling? Well, I'll answer the six K one before I get into the emotional question. Um right. we are you know, eighty-four away currently, so any help is appreciated. Family, friends, you know what to do. Second question, Simon Grayson, you know well. Um, I know what you are questioning yeah. through. So you're in a generation that would have seen Larry's first spell at Blackpool, uh, two thousand and seven. He, he, you know, he pretty much came out straight out from playing, didn't he? So yeah. as a young, you know, as you saw him, you know, grow up as a coach. What was your first thoughts of him, you know, his first spell? Because he was a young, hungry manager that looked really impressive for Blackpool. Well, Simon Grayson was was a legend for Blackpool. Um, he got Blackpool promoted into the championship after 30 years of trying. So you can imagine he went down as a legend. Although he went to Preston, he came back a sort of, you know, return of the prodigal, if you're being honest. And, you know, he was loved by many, but not everybody was happy to have him back. I, I, you know, the, it, it was mixed because obviously he'd been to Preston. He'd, he'd left uh, Leeds when, you know, at a time before Holloway came in and he kind of left at the wrong time. Um, but nobody really blamed him for going to Leeds because obviously the Oysens were just horrendous, weren't they? So... People were on his side, but when he went to Preston, it didn't do him any favours. But anyway, he came back and um, Jane was like super, super excited. She was so excited about Simon Grayson coming back. Um, if you ever see like, you know, the videos, which were sort of the pre-season stuff, Barrow away and then, you know, South End away. She was raving about him. The first game at home, Bristol Rovers, she was, you know, she was raving, coming out of the ground, seeing some of the best football, you know, she was so excited and um to be to be fair he did all right at the start everything was was great wasn't it you know blackpool were top of the league at, at, at one stage and just going into the christmas period we had a chance to go top of the league with a one over christmas and it just 
fell apart from from that Christmas onwards, where it became some of the worst football we've ever seen. And you, you know, you can see from Jane's reactions on the video where she's where she's actually crying on the video yeah. at the end of the Lincoln away, where she you know just keep watching these losing performances going away, and it she just couldn't see any end to it, and the players seemed to be falling out; they weren't playing for him, and it just went very sour. And, and we don't really know why there was um. There was a game we were playing Coventry away and we were winning 2 0 going into uh, the last f five minutes of the first half. And for some other reason, the team kept attacking. Coventry got an equaliser, uh, got a goal, and then they got an equaliser right on half time. And then um, with 10 minutes to go in the second half, he, he made um, a final substitution and then Delfonso got injured and we went down to 10 men and we lost in the last kick of the game, more or less. And he was never, he was never right after that. He just, I don't know. He was never right after that. Him, like his mentality yeah, I think he did. I think he took to a risk. Yeah, I think there was something about taking the risk at, at Coventry and going for it that made him completely change. And he went back to like, just, you know, he, he, his whole thing was to just get a goal and hang on and hang on and, I don't know whether he just was, you know, was affected badly by that commentary because we would have gone top of the, well, we were top of the league in real time because Jane, you know, put the video, you know, put, put a phone up and we were tuning up and we were top of the league. And then obviously we, you know, we lost that game and I don't know, he did something too. But even after that, you know, we played Peterborough and it was one of the best performances I've, I've seen for Blackpool in years. And then we beat you, Fleetwood, didn't we beat you three, three, one. And, and and we played well, you know. I know you say. Cheers, Lee. Bye, mate. No, but what I'm saying is that's what you're getting. You get a man. You know, you're getting an experienced manager that does know how to win a game. Yeah. Uh, it just went wrong at, at the end to the point where Jane can't even watch the first series of Sunderland until I die because she doesn't. She doesn't even want to like look at Simon Grayson's face. You know what I mean? It's, it's, she's traumatized by him, but it wasn't. You know, up until until up until Christmas, it was okay. He, he was all right. Um, some say he was soiled a bit by his experience at Sunderland, and you know all the media that went there. It didn't do him any good, and he's become a bit overcautious. But I think he's a I think he's an experienced manager, and I think he likes Joe Nuttall, so it might he might be able to get him in a Fleetwood on loan. <laughs> no, thanks. I <laughs> um, really appreciate. It. Yeah, um, and <laughs> hmm. Blackpool. Uh, Blackpool, a little bit of clips of him last, uh, yesterday. and Obviously, it yeah. did seem more. A lot of the goals came from set pieces. Feeney crossing it and then Nanyale getting on the end of it. Yeah. Fleet would just need a goal because the last 12 games, he scored five goals. He only could see nine. So, tight at the back. He has brought David Dunning, who obviously you will know who he did leave. He to Barrow, as we just mentioned, mm. before he went there as manager. Do you... Do you think, Grayson, this is a chance for him now at a decent club? He'll probably get a payoff at the end of it, six months. You know, keep a club up. You're not there long. And he's always started, you know, OK at clubs. You know, Sunderland, he was, you know, it's a miss. It was it was a few draws at the first few games, to be fair. A couple of wins. Blackpool, he started well. Those 13 wins, I guarantee three quarters mm. of them came in the first 20, 25 games. The good he's, thing... The good thing for you is you can't sign any players, so that's that, that's that's a good thing because the players he signed for Blackpool, I think he brought. I don't know how did he bring in that January transfer window. There was I don't know twelve or thirteen, but a whole team. But I don't think hardly any of them have stayed, and and none of them have gone to a higher level of football. You know, there's um, you know, they've gone to Bolton, haven't they, and Tramley Rovers and others. But um, yeah, they all went back. I mean, you got like Kieran Dewsbury. Did you get? Did he get him in? I can't remember if he... Yeah, yes, he did get Kieran Jewsby Hall in. He was a yeah, good got person. him in. So he does, have he does have contacts. Um, yeah. Um, he may be able to get some loans in, but it's, it's probably good he can't sign any players because I'm not I'm not 100% convinced on his signings. And he's a, he was a big fan of Joe Nuttall, as you know, he's, and he was a bit of a disaster at, at Blackpool. Who yeah. We hated, and then we actually started to kind of like him because we felt a bit sorry for Joe Nuttall. But yeah. I think he should keep you, Ben. I can't... You know, he's experienced and, um, you know, you're saying David Dunwell, he took over for a few weeks. Uh, he didn't want the job of manager. He liked to be assistant, but he did a good job. You, you know, he really did. And uh, 
David Dunn seems to get on with the players very well, whereas Simon Grayson seemed to fall out with a lot of players. That was his only that that yeah. You know, from looking for the I don't know because you know I'm not privy to uh, what goes on behind the scenes, but it just seemed there was there was something wrong with the players at Blackpool at that time. There was you know you could see they weren't playing for him. I don't know why. I, I, I have no idea why, but it just seemed that something happened and something went wrong somewhere before Christmas. Because up up until then, I thought we were going up with Grace. And, you know, we, you know, I, I I've got a video somewhere. I think it, you know we, we went to Gillingham and it was we. You know, my video is we are top of the league, so we were top of the league. You know, we. So. Yeah. I don't know. As long as he does. As long as he does what he did with Blackpool for the first, up until Christmas with you, you'll be safe. If he does what he did with Blackpool over the Christmas period after, you're in big trouble. <laughs> so, I think, so you I think don't he's know. Dimensional that like it's one way of playing, and he gets you know it he gets wasn't. kind of putting what I think. He, he wasn't though, Ben. Honestly, when in his first, you know, that year that he got Blackpool into the championship was. Phenomenal. I mean, we won 6 0 away at Swansea. That was a perfect Swan 10, that wasn't it? Yeah, it was the perfect 10. Uh, and, you know, and that that game at Swansea, you know, the Swansea, you know, you know, going to Swansea, right? It's a damn scary place to go, isn't it? I mean, it is a scare. I don't know if you've ever been to Swansea, but you, you, you're going into hell going to Swansea. Yeah. And when we were coming out, we were thinking, like, this is going to be, you know, <laughs> Going to get attacked here coming up. They actually kind of gave us a guard of honor applauding out because they were so amazed at the way that Blackpool had played and we were superb. So that was under Grayson. So he, he has got it in his locker. He's, it's, it's not like he's, I just don't know whether it's just that Sunderland experience. But having said that, he's gone to, you know, quite a few bigger clubs than, you know, Blackpool. You know, you know you'd say Sunderland are a very big club, aren't they? And, you know, yeah, Huddersfield. Are probably as big as Blackpool. You know, they're another big. Yeah. Club. So, whether he's, you know, he's seeing Fleetwood as a is not quite as much pressure. You know, there's not that pressure, and he hasn't got the fans' pressure because there's no fans there. So he may, he may be okay. Uh, Football. Yeah, I, I, I you got me on my ten to fifteen minutes. You remind me of Blackpool beating us three one last year. That Ellie, and then you yeah, but that's, you, you, yeah, but that's a good thing. But that's a good thing, and um, th there's no fans at any ground is it there's no there's no, there's no it doesn't matter where he goes the fans it, you know, we can't go in because of covid so what i'm saying is he hasn't got the fans on his back like he had a you know he you know it was getting toxic you know really toxic yeah. i mean the lincoln you know the lincoln game jane was crying not so much at the uh, at the football but just the the you know the bad uh you know that very toxic atmosphere at the end which she didn't enjoy you know join the oyster she had to walk away from it then because she doesn't like all that you know you know you know it's really vile and it's you know it's just not a comfortable thing she's not comfortable with it so so part of the crime was you know the toxic atmosphere but he's not going to get that is he because there's no there is no fans yeah. not I'm, I'm not saying there's no fleetwood fans i'm just saying there is no fans in the ground so he hasn't got fans on his back so that might be good for him to not have that pressure it might it might be good for him not to have the uh, obviously Sunderland must have been horrendous because he had like the, you know, the film cameras there every day filming everything he, he did. I would imagine that's a lot of pressure, yeah. you know, being, you know, and it all being put out on TV and, you know, God, you know, I couldn't imagine my life being put out on BBC. You'd never get over it, would you? Yeah. So, so he hasn't got that. So I think he'll be all right, Ben, if I'm being honest. So, you know, I think he'll be all right. Um, and I, in a way, I, I, I'd like him to do all right because because he's an, an all right bloke. You know what I mean? I don't want want him you know to fail, um, because he's had a bit of a you know he's had a tough time, hasn't he? You know, as a manager and and he was you know going back a few years, you would have said bring Simon Grayson in, he's going to get you into the championship because that's because that's what he did. You know yeah. that is exactly you know. I mean, he went to Preston. I remember going to Preston. And I'm thinking, oh bloody hell, oh god, they've got Grace. You know, they're going to get help. No, and I was I was so angry that that the, he'd gone there because I didn't want him to get him up, obviously, and he did get them up. Um, and you know, I used to listen to him on the radio, you know, because because I'd be driving home listening to Radio Lancashire, and I always thought he sounded, you, you know, knowledgeable on the radio. His interviews were always good, but he, but he's, there was something wrong at Blackpool because he was very much um, he blamed the players. 
you know, he blamed them. You know, he, he, he would publicly blame them all the time. And that you don't want your manager doing that, do you? No. You don't want your manager saying, you know, they would, you know, there's something, you know, the players, are, you know, didn't do what I told them to do today. And, you know, why did they carry on attacking? You know, why didn't they do, you know, the plat, you know, and he, he just berated him on the press. And I don't think that did him any favor. So hopefully he's learned a lesson from that. And he just, you know, he just takes it on the chin. If it's a bad performance, blames himself or whatever, you know, but blaming yeah. the players isn't, isn't because I'm sure the players just look at it and think, all oh, right, okay. Okay, you think it's us then, do you, pal? So, <laughs> <laughs> stuff you. <laughs> uh, on a nicer note, Lee, just finally, you before I let you yeah. go, your channel, mm. you only go to 3,000. You're very close. Where can I people know, go know. find it to go and subscribe? Well, they can go to, um, it's Lee Charles TV. Um, on As long as we visit that. Yeah, it's, it's Lee Charles TV. And yeah, we are very close to 3,000. And come and see us on the FBP because we'll be talking about it all tonight. Well, we, we've got a podcast uh, later, haven't we? So in about we'll be, 45 minutes. In about 45 minutes, yeah. So we'll be talking to you on there about it and we'll be discussing all the transfer news uh, and as they come in tonight. So we are live from 8 o'clock. So come and, come and join us then. Join in the fun and see more of Ben. He is the most um, knowledgeable vlogger i think there is out there and i think you do a great job so thank you, you Lee, and, uh, thank you John, mate. I, I hope i haven't slagged you off too much thank you for coming on Lee, and uh, everyone go and subscribe to his channel all right thank you thanks for having Perfect. me on thanks Lee. see you later bye bye so um there is lee obviously oh, lee. Still here. yeah you're still here oh oh i'm a staying or am i going you need to leave like, oh i go i go <laughs> Sorry, okay. Lee. Uh, right, okay. I thought you just removed me. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going. Thanks for having like me. Um, also, yeah, get removed me. Sorry. Bye. Um, Bye. Bye we are going to go to the comments. Thank you, Lee. Uh, we are going to go to the comments now. And uh, of Simon Grayson, uh, before we do wrap up the show. Now, Simon Grayson, some of his quotes yesterday. I'm really excited to manage Fleetwood Town. It is a club I know a lot about for my time on the Fair Coast as well as from from a different point of view. I had a chat with Andy Pilly this morning in much detail and we agreed a, a package and a deal for me to take on this role. I'm really excited. I want to get into the training ground and really put smiles on their faces and get back to winning ways. That is what I'm here to do. Short-term plans are to get back to winning ways and make sure we stay in this division. There are just some comments from Simon Grayson on the appointment as Fleetwood Town manager. Now, will Simon Grayson keep Fleetwood Town? Let me know in the comments down below. We will get to them. And let me know your thoughts on this appointment. The ex Sunderland, Bradford, Blackpool, Leeds, Huddersfield manager and Preston comes to Fleetwood. Again, another football club on his CV at the age of 51. Over 700 games in all competitions on his CV. Can he keep town in Skybet League One? What do you think of Grayson in his last job? Honestly, at Blackpool, not great. It was, while he was there, they were never going to challenge us while we were in the playoffs. Were they ever going to challenge for the top six? I don't think so. Did he play good football? No. Did he play attractive football? No. Were they winning games of football at the end? No. But this is a different time. Blackpool was a chance to get up as promoted. This is a chance to get 25 points. Keith Fleet would say for 21 games to go. You know, it's only, what, eight wins and a draw. You know, you've got to lose 12 games, really, to stay up as long as you win games and not draw them. So it, it's a difficult one to take. And uh, it's worrying times to Fleetwood Town right now. Joey Barton's comments, I was disgusted at. I'll be honest with you. And with, there was a comment on there before, which we're going to go back to. Uh, there we go. I listened to Robbie Fowler's podcast today. I will be surprised if Joey gets another managerial job. With his spilling the, uh, you know, spilling his uh, guts out public on Fleetwood, some things should be kept privately. Spot on. He uh, he said, "Oh, I should have, I paid the I was going to pay a player's wages, slagging you know Alex Cairns off, paying his own staff, going into a transfer embargo, and it just sounded like he ended it sweet and it, like he got a little bit of you know happiness from him, you know, revealing that information. It's like I don't think he has the same respect for Fleetwood now. It's a shame because we gave him his first job in managerial terms, and um, it is a shame on that department that." Um, He's ended that way. Two and a half years deal. Did he succeed at Fleetwood? He succeeded that we're a much better place now than he left us because 
you know, we were mid-table when you left us. You know, there's the youth team small set up. We've got a better team then. He had to get rid of a lot of alpha males from the squad. But did he succeed what he came in to do? No. That's the problem. Um... Will not be the last, will not last for the season. You don't think it'll last till the end of the season. Wow. Big statement. Then you'll end up mid-table. I reckon Fleetwood will stay up. I really do. I reckon Fleetwood will stay up. We'll finish, you know, in a decent position in the mid-table. Cheers, mate. Uh, I think they'll finish in a decent tape, uh, position in mid-table and they'll stay up. Um, I am sure of that. And uh, but we are going to do another five. If you've got any last questions on the appointment, let me know in the chat down below. We have got a video coming in the midweek on League One, so make sure you check out that one. Uh, one in this time is, is the aware of the bitterness of the lashes. Great motivation to bring three points from Gloomfield, says Tony Huller. Uh, yeah, I know he is on social media on Instagram, so I think the aim is to always go back to a employer and get a win. Um, at Blackpool, Simon Grayson had the Ocean Saga as Lisa Grayson had no uh, Grayson had no pressure um, on many levels. And if he wants, uh, he wants to use a stepping step to another championship club in the summer. I don't think he wants to use us as a stepping stone, but I think at Blackpool alone in his career, he wanted to get onto the map. So yeah, um, shout to Mick. Um, I feel we stay up mid table is perfect, says Chris. I agree with that, mate. I I think Fleetwood will stay up. I'm pretty confident in that. I think they, they are good enough. The you know you know Camps Madden, Vassell, Mackay will fire again. Hopefully Morris, if he does stay at the football club, will fire again, and we'll get back to winning ways more than you know sooner rather than later. He's got a lot of work to do, but hopefully he can do that and hit the ground running. But there has been another live stream, guys. I really hope you did enjoy it. Um, Simon Grayson appointed out fleet until the end of the season with David Dunn, the former Barrow AFC manager, who, again, didn't really succeed there. But, again, as a number two, he is OK. A decent appointment until the end of the season. Let's hope he can stay up, keep us up. His last few jobs haven't looked pretty, but I do feel that Fleetwood, he's got a chance to turn his career around and maybe get his platform back on the ladder. Thank you for watching my reaction. I did hope you did enjoy it. It's just been a, a short 45, 50 minute show on my reaction. Uh, we have got loads of content coming your way on League One and Fleetwood Town in the midweek. So make sure you check out that. We've got a live watch along on Saturday as Fleetwood take on Bristol Rovers in Simon Grayson's first role. Please remember to like and subscribe. We are so close. We are 84 subscribers away from 6,000 subscribers. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, put the notifications on, that'll be massively appreciated. And I will see you very shortly. Thank you for everyone that's watched. Thank you, Tony. As always, good stream. Lee did come on the show. Don't, don't worry about that. I will see you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Until later, Simon Grayson's Red and White Army. Thanks for watching, guys.